Welcome back to the Traders Network show and our continued coverage of Humanity 2.0. I'm Matt Bird, broadcasting worldwide from Rome, Italy, for Equities.com and our affiliate partners. My next guest is Jose Pacheco. Did I get that right? Perfect. He is the co-director of the Master's Degree of Advanced Manufacturing Design for MIT. And he's going to be our eyes and ears and give us a little feedback and comments here in yesterday's events. Um, Jose, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. The pleasure is all mine. Uh, you know, when I found out you were coming in, I, I just I had to have you in here. I saw you um, saw you motoring around yesterday. Um, so we, we saw a lot of things yesterday, uh, a lot of panels, a lot of impact, a lot of advocacy, uh, a lot of a lot of influential organizations all coming together to figure out how to solve some social problems. That's right. Um, I spent the majority of my time doing outtakes and interviews. Uh, you were inside. What was your takeaway? I think that uh, the companies that were there and some of their partners that they're working with are thinking about very deeply what are the ethical implications of the technologies they're deploying. And so these emerging technologies, uh, the most recent one, of course, is artificial intelligence. We're all talking about that. But this is a conversation that has been going on for well over 70 years now, you know, since uh, after World War II when we started talking about the impact of uh, splitting the atom, we had scientists and engineers trying to figure out what do we do with this and how do we manage this responsibly. Then we had the biotechnology revolution mm. and then we had synthetic biology. Now we have artificial intelligence. Uh, we have encryption, which is mm -hmm. kind of an emerging new technology in mm -hmm. some ways, and autonomous vehicles, autonomous uh, robots. Uh, and there's more that certainly we be, uh, are seeing in the lab. And so, Having this ongoing conversation and seeing that these companies are undertaking it in a very thoughtful way is actually very heartening. And I think that's very important, both for the companies, as companies, but also as members of society and for the planet in general. Do you think it's, a, it's, a, it's corporations' obligation on an ethical side to actually start participating like we saw yesterday? versus what's, the other, what's coming down the pipeline on the regulatory side, which is the forced participation? Yeah, well, uh, obligation or responsibility is what we like to call it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, every company is made up of people. Mm -hmm. And we, as people, uh, participate in communities. We participate in our local communities. Mm -hmm. And so it's our responsibility as citizens of those communities mm -hmm. and of the planet. Um, and so it's... Um, also important for us as members of industry to undertake the hard thinking that we need to do to understand what the implications are of what we're doing. Because in the end, really, we're the only ones that know what the implications may be at the very beginning because we're deep into it, mm -hmm. right? And so by the time uh, regulation comes along, it's because usually something has gone wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to be proactive. And so it is responsibility, oh, it, for sure. Is that always the case? So I, I think what we're seeing is a bit of an, a bit, a bit different um, because a lot of the regulation that regarding privacy and, and data mm -hmm. and what's governing what's gonna be the future of potentially AI and those sorts of things, those regulations, those policies were written in a time where we couldn't even anticipate or even you know fathom the idea of a social network like Facebook mm -hmm. so if those 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 regulations were rewritten today what would they look like <laughs> that's a great question uh, well we are also starting to see for the first time what it means for us to have privacy uh, potentially or no privacy right? well I mean and, and, and that's the question because yeah. We freely give away our, our, our data. So is there actual privacy in data? Or do we actually have ownership? Mm. I think that's not something we even assumed was possible to mm -hmm. question 30 years ago, right? Um, but now everything that is being quantified about us mm -hmm. is valuable. And so that's a whole new way of thinking about ourselves as mm -hmm. well, right? It's not just what we do physically, but everything we do digitally and how we interact with the world, both physical and digital. And so, um, but there's no way I think we could have anticipated that except to say that you know, we have to understand what, that we have impact upon the world. So we have to think about from a regulatory framework perhaps, 
um, or just from a governance perspective, what are the potential expansions of who we are, literally who we are and what it means to be you, know, you and to That's be right. me? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I uh, uh, I spent a lot of time on the governmental side, covering a lot of the social impact issues, and, and as as uh, on the practice side, with the communication um, and for emerging growth companies, and you know we're seeing this convergence of of um, job responsibility protecting laws, mm -hmm. and some of them may be obsolete, but yet they're still trying to protect the integrity of them, and we're seeing now conflicting stuff because the DNA of how data is used today is much different than what the laws were that crafted the regulatory issues of how they should work. And so we're, it's like this, there's this huge gray area uh, of, of businesses operating in. And I think that's, you know, I think AI is going to push the boundaries of regulatory and push the boundaries of private industry of how they're gonna regulate because they're just gonna remove themselves <laughs> for the most part from a lot of that process. So how they automate that's gonna be pretty amazing. Um, moving on, um, equities is a emerging growth network how is mm -hmm. how is this next wave of technology going to affect the emerging growth markets oh it's uh, it's a really really interesting time actually i think for business in general startups yeah. uh, equities are being impacted by technologies that are now converging that used to be separate oh. and you know in my work that i focus mostly on uh, manufacturing and design uh, everybody's heard of 3d printing which is a form of additive manufacturing mm -hmm. And uh, it impacted, you know, 20, 30 years ago when it first came out. So it's even though a, it's... Has it been that long? Yeah, the first patents for 3D printing actually were in the 80s. And the first company was founded in the late 80s. And a colleague from MIT actually started one of those and sold her first 3D printing company in the early 2000s. Is that right? Yeah. So that's the other thing about... Technology is that by the time it becomes popular and you know part of our everyday <laughs> lexicon, it's been 20, 30 years. You know, I, I think I read, <laughs> as a kid, I remember looking back thinking, oh, that's not possible. And then watching something like out of the movie Alien, them printing a gun or whatnot. Right. I'm like, that's not possible. <laughs> and like, and it's been, it really was. <laughs> it was really, it was really working interesting, but you, it's, you're right. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so now, but, and so, you know, you, you talk about these technologies coming from the lab being, Kind of having a proof of concept. And I think that's where you begin to see some of the science fiction kind of aspects is like, wow, if it worked once or it worked twice in the lab, but now how do you actually produce it on a mass scale or how do you use it, uh, produce it economically, mm -hmm. right? And so that was the first part. But then now we start thinking about, for example, this concept of uh, well, another important technology in 3D printing was the ability to develop the 3D models digitally so that you can actually print them, right? Right. And so uh, those two now start to come together. The medical devices field is, I mean, uh, you know, med tech, um, the whole medical devices field, it's like the 3D printing is, 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 is removing the, um, the molding, procurement process, all that stuff, That's taking right. a, a CAD design, turning it into the, the fundamental, you know, beta product and then from there, and it's usable. That's right. And it's, as we now have new emerging materials, so mm -hmm. the technology of materials emerging, you begin to use new materials. So it's not just plastic mm -hmm. anymore. It's metals, right? It's composites. In some cases, actually, it's biomaterials. It's actual cells that are being wow. printed into a matrix. And um, this convergence of technologies then is what creates so much power. And so when we think about it from the perspective of a company and how they deliver value to the customer, because at the end, that's ultimately what every company has to do. Mm -hmm. They have to design something that meets customer needs, do it economically, reliably, and consistently, repeatably. Um, and so these new emerging technologies are allowing them to do that. Mm -hmm. And so you're able to use less energy, less material, less waste, right? And so when you're able to do that, that's less cost. That hopefully means better financial performance. I mean, just by definition, by less cost, less use of material, um, you're able to perform better. I, uh, Boeing, as one example, talks about uh, a very important concept for Boeing or any, uh, like Airbus is the uh, 
the weight to fly ratio, right? So when you're making a part for a plane, you might get 20 kilograms of uh, metal. And because you have to machine it, you then make a part that only weighs one kilogram. So waste is 19 kilograms, right? Wow. And so, but if you're able to 3D print that part, there's right, no waste. There's hardly any waste. It might be on the order of grams because you have to finish it, right. um, you know, machine it at the end. But yes, so now if you're able to do that wow. consistently and you're eliminating, you know, 80, 90% of the material you used to buy, mm. less shipping costs, right? Less material that you have to buy, less waste that you actually have to pay to be carried away. And so this is one of the, I think, the aspects of these emerging technologies with respect to financial performance that's very important that we have to think about. And it's not just these, but some of the things mm. that are coming from the lab that you know, do seem like science fiction as well. You know, I'd like to have you back on the show a little later. We, we, we broadcast at the NASDAQ, uh, and we do a weekly, and, and, and in, some, in some cases, daily episodes. And I'd love to have you back on the show at a later time, if that, that would be all right. Sure, absolutely. What I'd like to do is cut to a quick commercial break. I want to keep you for another segment. Okay. Come back and, and have a little chat. Let's, let's bring this black full circle to Humanity 2.0. Sure. And I'll let you get you on your way, so you head back to, Sounds good. Head back to the U.S. Does that <laughs> sound good? All right, we'll be right back after these messages. Just don't go away. The 2019 Humanity 2.0 Forum is brought to you by Cisco Systems, CSR solutions that are accelerating global problem solving in ways that have never been attempted before. To Ulala, providing mobile blockchain solutions for the unbanked. And to Pledge Camp, the next generation of crowdfunding. A special thanks to Tonico in Vatican City for hosting our program. And lastly, special consideration to Burst IQ, a leader in healthcare and blockchain, to Crown Sterling, the leader in digital sovereignty and quantum encryption, to Dignity Health, delivering high quality and affordable healthcare for all. And lastly, to Falcon Ventures, as transformative as our entrepreneurs. And thank you, One Public Relations, for all your PR and media support. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away.